In this video, we'll be looking at the solar system data chart that's found on page 15 of your Earth Science Reference Table. So here's our solar system data chart. It lists the Sun and the eight planets in our solar system along with Earth's moon. In addition to that, you have some other information that without this reference table, you would be expected to memorize or remember. So let's all give a round of applause to our reference table. That's enough. Okay, first, the Sun is the only star in our solar system. It is the gravitational center around which most objects orbit. The inner four planets are called terrestrial planets. They all have in common a high density. They are small, relatively speaking, they are dense, and they are rocky, meaning if we were to visit any of these planets, you would be able to walk on a surface, a rocky surface, very similar to Earth. Next, we have our Jovian planets. Our Jovian planets are gaseous planets, and they are all very large. Their sizes are much larger than the terrestrial planets. They also have very low densities. One of the famous questions that I've seen on a regions that's very, very ridiculous is about this planet Saturn and its low density. In between Mars and Jupiter sits an asteroid belt. This asteroid belt contains asteroids that are orbiting around the Sun. It's the dividing line, if you will, between Mars and Jupiter. It's kind of where the terrestrial planets end and the Jovian planets begin. Let's move up to the top of the table. This first column is the mean distance from the sun. How, on average, how close these planets are to the sun. Notice it's a mean distance, an average, because they're elliptical orbits. So there is a time where they're closer and a time where they're further away. So that's why it's the average. It's also listed in millions of kilometers. So for instance, Mercury is 57.9. That's really 57,900,000. So just keep that in mind. The next column is the period of revolution. That's how many days or years uh, it takes for this object to orbit around the sun one time. So basically, if you're talking about the planet Saturn, it takes 29 and a half Earth years. So the Earth revolves around the sun 29 and a half times before Saturn revolves around the sun once. That's really what this equates to. Okay, so for instance, if we look at Mars, Mars is uh, 687 days, kind of twice the amount of time it takes the Earth to revolve around the Sun. So an Earth, a, Mar a Martian year is two times as long as an Earth year. So that's what this data, data really is showing. Our next column is the period of revolution at the equator, which is basically the time it takes to spin one time. Um, so if we go down to the Earth, familiar to us, 23 hours, 56 minutes, 4 seconds, that's a day. Right, a, a sidereal day, but Mars also has about a 24-hour day, which is one of the reasons why we're visiting that planet with all the uh, equipment that we are, so we can one day hopefully, you know, send a colony there. The other planets have varying uh, rotational speeds. Venus takes 243 days. Um, it's actually longer for it to spin on its axis. A day is longer on Venus than a year. Okay, and all the other planets, you can see that the rotational spin has very little to do with the position it is in Earth in the uh, solar system and the size of the planet. Those two things do not matter. Um, rotational spin is kind of uh, its own thing. Our next column. Eccentricity. We talked about this a couple of weeks ago. That's how oval shaped the orbit is. The closer the orbit is to one, the more of an ellipse, the more of an oval it is, the closer it is to zero, 
be closer to a circle at us. Notice that all of the eccentricities are measured to the nearest thousandth, and there are no units. If we wanted to describe how big each object was in our solar system, we would measure them at the diameter where they're the biggest because of uh, the forces that make up uh, a planet's shape. It causes it to bulge at the equator. That's not just Earth. It's all objects in the solar system. It has to do with their rotational speed. So if we look at this list, you can make out the biggest object, which is the sun. It's 1,392,000 kilometers across. That's, that's pretty big. But when we talk about planets, Jupiter at 142,984 uh, kilometers is the biggest planet in our solar system. Okay, Saturn's not far behind, but uh, you know that's how we can estimate, uh, in comparison to the Earth, how big planets are. Uh, the next column is the mass, another tool that we can use to judge how big these planets are. But this is a little different. It's not measured in kilograms. It's really measured in Earth units. So the Earth is one unit, and this compares all the different parts of the solar system to the Earth. So, for instance, uh, Mercury is uh, six hundredths the size of Earth's. Uh, so it's a much smaller planet. Whereas, um, you know, Jupiter is 317.83 times the mass of Earth. So that's how that works. And finally, we have our density column. And I alluded to this before. Um, when we look at density, we always have to re reference it to water, right? Water is 1.0. So anything that's higher than 1.0 would sink in the water. Anything lower would float. So we have this information about the density of planets because when the solar system formed, all of the denser materials were exploded out during whatever process started our solar system, probably the formation of the sun. And that denser material couldn't travel very far in space because it's dense, it's heavy. And um, it made up the inner four rocky planets and the asteroids that orbit the sun. After the asteroids, Denser materials did not, didn't make it that far. The only things that did make it that far were less dense materials, like gases. So that's why the gas giants really exist at that uh, distance from the sun, because uh, denser materials just couldn't make it out that far. One of the common questions that I, I've really come across when it comes to density and planets, it's kind of ridiculous, but you know you should know it. Of the planets listed in this table, which one could float in water if it was placed in water? Impossible to do. But if you could take one of these planets and throw it in a swimming pool, which of them would float? The answer is Saturn, because Saturn has a density of 0.7 grams per centimeter cubed, which means it's lower than the density of water, and therefore it floats. I know that's a ridiculous thing to consider, and it can't be done, but for some reason, the regions like to ask that question. So just have that in mind that we use uh, water to compare the density uh, in terms of sinking and floating. And that's our solar system data chart. Thanks for watching.